Hi, this is Matt. I'm back with another watercolor painting. This is uh, a transparent watercolor of, in this case, 45 different birds. And this one took a long time. Uh, this was in about the 100-hour area by the time it was finished. Uh, and it is kind of just wall-to-wall -wall detail. It's 18 by 24 inches, and there's almost no relief from detail in this. Every square inch is kind of covered with one bird or another um, in the process of doing this. Part of what I wanted to do with this was experiment with just some different colors and shapes and forms and uh, try to create an interesting composition with uh, a lot of movement in it. I started by, after doing a lot of sketches, I transferred the final sketches to the paper. Once those were transferred over, I started just blocking in the lightest local colors of everything. Kind of a standard approach to doing watercolor. And trying to cover as much of the paper as possible, as quickly as possible. And the opening washes are pretty quick. Um, I think this was with a number four round brush. And just kind of blocking in the, the big major colors of these. You can see I composited a bunch of uh, reference photos that I had taken in Photoshop to kind of play with a, a variety of different compositions. It took me a while to figure out which birds I, A, had enough photo reference for, and uh, B, what, which colors were right. You know, I wanted to have the, the right color blues and uh, some interesting whites to play with. And I wanted to investigate the, uh, the slight difference in, in some of these white colors that you see. You know, you think of them as all reading white, but there's a lot of different textures to the different feathers of the birds, and some are more, you know, warm whites, and some are more, you know, kind of uh, um, more bright whites. And the same with the blues. There's a lot of variety to these colors that you you initially call, well, it's a bluebird, but usually there's a lot of subtlety to it that makes it interesting. So I thought by um, putting those next to each other in a, in, in a painting like this, you could uh, kind of mess with the color a little and, and then see what, uh, what interesting things happened. At this point, I'd switch to a number two round because there's just so much detail on this and uh, just kind of hopping around from place to place trying to get things developing evenly. Um, I didn't want to spend all the time just working on a, a little bluebird one at a time. I wanted to kind of have everything develop at about the same pace. And early on, there's not a whole lot of contrast in this, but eventually I want to bring in a lot of saturated color and, and good contrast to, to keep your eye moving around and, and make it interesting and have a lot of motion in the picture. You can see on the right the palette that I use most of the time is a is a butcher's tray and I'll squirt the paints off to the side and then if it's a color I know I'm going to be using a lot of I may have some of it in the middle of the the palette but then I can mix onto that white of the butcher's tray and it, it is a great way to uh, get color the way you want it. You can kind of make a little puddle of it there and you read it off the white of the butcher's tray is just like the white of the paper so you really know what color you're getting. Some people mix in little wells and things like that. If I'm doing a larger area of paint, I'll do that. But for most of these, I get much better color as if I do it on the butcher's tray. I really know what I'm getting.
again, you can see the reference in there it's, that was up for a second or two, and I'm trying to build up to that level of contrast. Uh, it, it takes time to build up the texture and, and, and have the tones look right, and the way to do that for me is lots of um, layers glazing them on to build up a nice, uh, convincing uh, texture. The larger birds that are darker are tricolored herons, and those I got photos of when I was down in Florida. They're beautiful birds, and in breeding plumage they have some almost purpley reds on the back going to some beautiful um, dark purpley gray colors on the front. And then they have these interesting yellow faces and parts of their beak, which I thought would go well with the uh, similarly shaped but differently colored snowy egrets, which are the white guys with the yellow faces and black beaks. Then there's some white ibis that are in there that have the uh, kind of decurved pink bills. And those are those are fun. I thought these would all make for interesting uh, patterns as the painting developed. Now working on some of those bluebirds, they were they were challenged to paint to get the blues uh, kind of uh, working right with the bluebirds. They're such beautiful birds, and um, that the blue that they have is a lot of subtleties to it, especially when you put it next to these uh, the tricolored herons, which have you know such different blues, and the blue jays, which have um, you know just kind of some iridescence to them. And it was interesting to see the colors next to each other and how those played off each other as the painting progressed. Sometimes when you're doing watercolors or any painting, it's fun to have lost edges where you know you have a lot of detail and then it kind of disappears and it kind of comes to again. In this painting, there's, there's no lost edges. Everything's sharp and everything's in focus. And I thought with a painting like this that's, you know, kind of relentless detail, you kind of need just lots of sharp, and then the textures will kind of blend into each other, and in a way that that kind of gave you some relief. You'd have these, you know, blocks of white, but then you'd have, uh, you know, some of the blue-grays maybe blending into each other, but it's all sharp, which was kind of interesting uh, change from the way you might normally go through a painting. In designing this, I, I had most of the birds facing in the one direction, off to the left, and then I had a handful of them, the bluebirds are all facing in the opposite direction, which um, it kind of kept things from being too one-sided and uh, kind of pulled your eye back into the canvas, I thought. And at the same time, they, they kind of fit perfectly in the little uh, sections that they they had, you know, between the, uh, the other birds. You can see now that it's starting to get some of the saturated color and contrast that I, I tend to like. Um, and there's a little bit of relief from that with this, there's kind of a, the white in the middle that kind of sort of blends together. It still has hard edges. And in doing this, I wanted to look into those slightly different whites and blues, and you know, the the blue jays have almost a purpley, you know, red kind of quality to the white shadows on the bird, and then the, the tufted titmice kind of have the buffy colors on their bellies, and then you've got the egrets and the uh, ibis, which are just 
in a very stark way. And, and yet those two, although the, the ibis and the snowy egret have similar colors on them, and they're the same sort of white, they have very different textures. The, uh, the ibis have kind of a ruffly feathers almost, and the snowies are very sleek. I initially thought that the whites were going to be really fast to paint, but in fact there's just as much detail on those. It, and it, it was almost fussier because you had to get just the right balance to those whites to have them look convincing and have the right shadow. And so it was, uh, it was a mistake to think that they'd be fast. Nothing on this ended up being fast. All ended up taking forever. point is pretty much just starting to pick out the little details and then just you know the bulk of the work was done now it was just kind of trying to build a little contrast on the edges of the wings and you know get the little sparkles in the eyes just right and most of the work was done with the number two at this point I think and really sharp brushes so you reveal that white edge and at that point it was done a ton of detail on this but it was uh, it was fun to do well thanks for watching if you get a chance have a peek at the blog and the website and if you'd like leave a comment